Hello everyone, I'm Pascal Martinez from Volvo Construction Equipment. I'm the Global Director for Strategy and Solution Portfolio Development. So we are here to talk about the PLM Fundamentals, which is a program that we have launched in Volvo Construction Equipment. We have launched this uh, program because we, we see Volvo Construction Equipment is a large OEM in the construction equipment industry. To give you just a view of the short history, we grew through organic growth and acquisition for several years. We wanted to become a full line uh, OEM in construction equipment. This led us to have several product lines coming from different uh, purchases in uh, our firms during the history. And each of those purchased uh, product lines came with their, of course, their ways of developing product, their IT scape, etc. We ended up with a very complex setup in the company, and we had to align the product development process and also share more common IT solutions and also uh, product systems or, or parts. And we had a very clear need to align and enable sharing of resources across the organization. We had also a large program called CAST in the organization. CAST stands for Common Architecture and uh, Sharing Shared Technology. Sorry. And we had a strategy on the IT side to use out of the box solution. We did not want to create our own solution from start or personalize too much an existing one. So to get alignment in those different organizations and product lines, my team created a prototype where we could demonstrate some of the most painful issues that we had in the organization and demonstrate a solution. And from there, we were able to launch a series of workshop with each product lines and all the members that are involved in the full life cycle uh, of a product, meaning that it comes from product development, through operations, through sales, and through the market. Because the idea that we have launched is from the start to have an end-to-end -end view, meaning a complete life cycle of a product in mind, and making sure that we have one way to manage product data in the company and that it is shared across the organization during this life cycle. And when doing this, those workshops, it occurs that we had a lot of alignment and we ended up with what we called an acceleration workshop to really start the program itself. And during this workshop, we were 60 people in the, from the organization, managers at all levels, with a senior vice president, for example, VPs, directors, managers and specialists in the organization coming here and sharing their findings from the different workshops they participated on. And we created a scenario with them to really launch that program. And that was really successful, this approach with the prototype, several workshops, and then the acceleration workshop to give us the way forward. And when doing these uh, items, we were able to understand what are we doing, how we will do it, with what solution and what are the steps, and why. And in the why, we have identified during those workshops, for example, 175 in points in the organization that we had to address. And when we have done that, we have created together the vision and this vision is there to create the alignment in the organization. In this vision, you see that we can create alignment through adding more value in each site, and uh, I would say for us, it's product platform organization or product line organization by use of much more efficient methods and tool chain. Of course, we also use single product data along the old product lifecycle so that 
all the work that is done is adding value to the previous work. And in our industry, you may know that we are moving from a product solution to a service oriented solution, meaning that people are buying machines and tomorrow they, they will buy a solution to, to do something. In our case, it's very much move ground or move something or build something. And we target to increase efficiency and quality to improve customer satisfaction through less mistakes caused by information handovers when I was referring to 175 points. Most of them were really information handovers between people, organization, systems, etc., where we create issues. So this we have addressed, addressed with the solution. And to communicate around this vision and the way of thinking and the way to implement it, we have created a PLM end-to-end -end house, or house, oh, sorry, and house for the end-to-end -end PLM, where we start from the fundamentals, and that's the title of that uh, event for us. It's uh, where we build all the solutions that are the first steps and enable four other uh, blocks like part and service information that are more on the aftermarket, requirement management, which is a little bit earlier, after life, application lifecycle management, where we introduce also the software and services, and of course, virtual manufacturing for advanced tools to, to, be, to be managing all operations through 3D data. That's where we express the needs and this PLM fundamentals. We are now in a position where we have rolled, we have defined three steps. The first two steps are rolled out, meaning that we have covered four of the five product lines and we are on our way to cover the last one. And uh, Eman, who is the program manager for the last two steps, will explain how we drive that in more details. Hello, thank you. Now I think, Eman, I give the word to you. Thank you, Pascal. Uh, my name is Eman Mogdad, and I'm a PLM program manager in Volvo Construction Equipment. Uh, I will continue what uh, Pascal has just uh, started. Uh, what is important in the slide presented by Pascal is obviously the strong vision that we were having in our company of what we want to achieve in the PLM program. That is our why. If you remember our first slide where you see the why, the how, and the what. So Pascal has given you basically the why we are doing what we're doing, the reason of what we're doing actually in the PLM. It's highly important that in everything you do, you are building a very strong why, because every time in your PLM program, we will come back to that why and secure that you are achieving it and delivering. From there, me as a PLM program manager, I have built the how we will deliver that vision and what we will deliver uh, in order to secure that vision is actually implemented uh, in all the platforms. So obviously the, the how is basically the PLM program uh, is, will deliver the methods, the processes and the tools. Three important things that will enable us to have this central information uh, hub for all our products uh, based on the PTC windshield. And what we will deliver in order to align the method, the processes and the tool is basically, we will use the value ready deployment, the process from PTC uh, that is considered as best practice. And we will streamline our processes uh, toward the, uh, uh, what we toward the process that we will implement basically uh, in the PTC windshield solution. 
And I remind here that it, we, our target was to implement an out of the box solution with as little uh, customization as possible, if not no customization. And by that, Windshield uh, become, can become our only source of truth for all our product uh, data. Obviously, when we start such a large program, uh, we need a strong uh, uh, information model, okay? And that is information model. Uh, we have developed it over the past years through our program that Pascal mentioned, the CAST program, which is Common Architecture and Shared Technology. And that architecture basically allowed us to align the markets, the product, but also the production supply chain into one information model that we implemented actually uh, in Winchell. When I talk about information model, it's basically how do we divide our product into smart interfaces, into smart modules, and what are the different attributes for, for each of those interfaces, module, systems. In order to show you that, I will right now go on a short demo of Windchill. Of course, I have prepared my screen in advance to load the machine. It will be quick. Then I will come back to my presentation. So this is an example of a product that we have in our company. So what you see here is one compact excavator machine. Okay, uh, what you see here, when I talked about the information model, it's basically all what you see here, all those part attributes, basically we define them uh, in advance by aligning what product engineering would like, what manufacturing would like to see, what purchasing would like to see, basically uh, uh, what is, the important attribute that we need to show to our company on each of our products. So this is one of the products and I will surf on the structure. So of course I have prepared a tab here. So you see, this is our product. It is a, all our pro, uh, basically uh, what you see here is a structure of one compact excavator with all possible options that we can sell on the market. I can go on what we call here the zero zero. It's, it actually is our base machine. And you see you have the electric equipment, hydraulic equipment, et cetera, et cetera. And all what you see here are basically migrated from, migrated from our legacy system. And obviously the, the naming code has been agreed and developed during our migration strategy and integration strategy here in the, in the PLM program. And here you see, for example, when I surf on the structure, if I go on one, one part, obviously you can see all the attribute of that part here that we agreed on in our information model. And what is highly important, and here I will switch screen. So all, what you have seen is basically that three model. I have just chosen today to show you during my presentation, how I open that into Creo view here and you see you can surf on the machine and what you see here is basically available to everyone in the company so everyone can go and surf on the product structure and visualize uh, basically the exact same data as what product design and engineering has released so yeah that's basically a short demo. I don't want to, it's just a couple of minutes, but it's just showing you how we transform the vision, the why, the how, and the what. And the what is basically what you see here on your screen. So that is the schema that brought us to deliver what we are showing right now. Now I will switch to my presentation again. I put it in slide mode here. And if I go back, so Pascal talked about that uh, house. Highly important to understand 
that the foundation, I, what I showed you on the screen right now are basically all considered as the PLM fundamentals. What we include in the PLM fundamentals are basically all the 3D uh, design of our parts in our uh, 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 authoring tool, uh, the product structure EBOM, valid for hardware and software, but also the MBOM and the SBOM. So those are the foundation and these are the parent fundamentals. From there, what we are developing is of course, more advanced tools to manage ma virtual manufacturing, more advanced tools to manage our service solution, more advanced tools to requirement management, and basically more advanced tools to manage our service information, parts and service inf information here. And all of these are basically, uh, uh, we are using uh, the PTC suits for all of these room in the house. And windshield, uh, what I showed you right now are the fundamentals and this is the basement of our house. Now, why, how, what? Keep this in mind. What? It's important when you manage such, I mean, me as program manager, when you manage such large program, it's highly important that you, you have people from business who are not familiar with IT problems. And from the beginning of the program, I have split the program into two separate, not separate, they are connected obviously because we are communicating, but two uh, 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 large part in the program are the capabilities development and the capabilities deployment. In the capabilities development, I have put everything related to VRD development, process methods and tool basically, migration activities, integration activities, and education material development. In the capabilities deployment, we, it's an organization that is exclusively uh, dedicated to deploy what we develop in the program to the organization, to the different product platform. And they were really focusing and exclusively on the business needs. We were not confusing business in the platform who are engineers working with excavator, with reloader. We were not confusing them with IT problems. So we were solving all our IT problems in the, capability de the capabilities development. And once those are solved, we are proposing them to the capabilities deployment team and they were rolling it out. Just as an example, so in that's here just a reminder of the setup that I have put in place. So as program manager, I was having the migration CPM, integration CPM, the VRD lead, okay? The IT deliveries, obviously you need IT, including the infrastructure, you need servers, you need development environment, a lot of IT deliveries that we need to secure to make all of this work nicely. And the education and change management, a highly important part. Change management is 80%. So it's highly important that in the organization, we build a, a, a strong education material that we are able to deploy through the different uh, platform leaders in the capabilities deployment team. So road equipment, articulated haulers, loaders, reloaders, excavator, compact excavator, and compact reloader. Previously, Pascal mentioned phase one, phase two, phase three. So in phase one, we roll out windshield to road equipment. Phase two, we roll out uh, windshield to articulated haulers, reloaders, compact excavator, compact reloader. And as we speak, we are rolling out phase three for excavators uh, right now. So basically that's it for me. I hope you had an overview of how we manage the program within Volvo construction equipment to deliver successfully the PLM to all our platforms.